All right, welcome back guys, Scrabology again. So today I wanna to talk about something that virtually everybody can improve on, and that is breaking the rhythm of your combatives, whether you're in a self-defense situation, or whether you're in a finishing mode, or whether you're just in a fight. Breaking rhythm creates a distraction for the attacker. So the goal is to create a new sight picture, essentially. So what we're doing is moving right, moving left, and getting a different look at the target, reorient, reorienting ourselves, and allowing that movement and that time, the break in the rhythm, to create an opportunity for us. So virtually everyone can improve on this. And what happens when you improve on it is you become sharper and crisper with your movement. It creates more opportunities for you to create combatives and to create punches and bunches, as we might say. And I think if you pay attention to the detail here, you'll get a lot better at this very, very quickly. All right, so I mentioned we're gonna break rhythm today. Breaking rhythm is a concept where we basically take our natural rhythm and we make a movement or some kind of, uh, we use a procedure of some kind to break rhythm. It, conf it confuses people or it confuses the attacker specifically. So in the context of hitting the mitts or making a combination, we typically do something here at the school where we call move right or move left. And, and to be more specific or, or more descriptive, we say pull right or pull left. Today we're gonna pull right. So we pull right after we've thrown our right straight. So not only does it confuse and break rhythm, it creates a situation where the combatant's coming from the same side twice in a row. So if I set up in a fighting stance like this, and I make right straight, left hook, right straight, after I'm done with this right straight, as I uh, pull it back in, I'm gonna get off the center line, I'm gonna get off the center line by making a, a, a step that's right and slightly back. Notice that my knee is gonna be inside, the inside blade of my ankle, and watch my left foot as it drags and then creates a break. So I'm doing something like this, right straight at the end, this motion. And this motion where I'm pulling my knees together, this knee is inside the ankle, and this is breaking. In the same way that I would break if I'm bursting forward, in this case I'm going back, I'm breaking and pushing into the ground, and I'm creating an opportunity to move off the center line and go right back in with a right straight. There are three keys to this. The first key is as I make these punches, as I withdraw, I step. When I step, instead of sliding, I think of it as a break. So I pull my arm back and go right with my right foot and break. I'm inside my ankles here, okay? The weight's important. I'm not turning my center line away, I'm just leaving my hips and uh, shoulders in the same angle. And you'll see after the break that I try to pull down and dip my shoulder so that this shoulder is lower than my right shoulder. What you'll have a tendency to do is dip your right shoulder and you'll see the angle coming down here. This is incorrect, the weight goes to the outside of your, sh of your shoe or of your foot and it creates a delay. So as I step, I pull in, I break, and I pull this down, my right shoulder, my left shoulder's up to roll with punches and I pull down with the shoulder. I can immediately come back in. As you make this exercise, if you go one, two, three, when you step, if you feel this shoulder dip, you went too far. When you step, if you feel this foot dragging, and breaking what would be a slightly longer stance, you've gone too far. I want to step, I want the knee inside the ankle on the right side, I want the knee inside the ankle on the left side, the left foot creates a break, and I go right back in with my punch. In general, when I make this motion, if I start nose to nose with the pad holder or the, or the attacker or the, the person I'm fighting, my nose center line should clear the outside shoulder with this small step. It does that by, obviously, by virtue of moving right, and also by moving my head slightly away from where the center is, not here, but here. All right, so moving right to break rhythm, just a couple key points for you. Make sure you recognize what the right foot's doing and how you're sharing the weight. Usually the knee needs to be planted inside the ankle. The left foot comes across and creates a break for you. Dip the left shoulder to ensure you're set up, your platforms are ready, your weight is positioned to drive back in and make the counter -tap. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to drop down, send us your comments or questions in the box below. Uh, please do subscribe, and as always, walk in peace.